In many ways, the Nether in Minecraft is its own version of Hell, but almost no monsters in this land strike more fear into players' hearts than these giant flying pillows, the gas. They shoot massive fireballs that can do up to seven or more hearts of damage in one shot, and have been known to constantly kill players who venture into this mysterious and creepy place. But what exactly even are these gas? One theory from YouTuber SPDS takes an especially disturbing guess at this. You see, in the Minecraft Mobistiary, which is a breakdown of each and every creature you can find in-game, some players discovered that there were some pictures of gas that showed them as having mechanical insides with the redstone controllers. This is a huge revelation, as it implies that these gas may actually be robots, but it only gets crazier from here. You see, in-game there's an advancement called Uneasy Alliance, which tasks players with rescuing a gas from the nether, bringing it safely home to the overworld, and then killing it. If we disregard how messed up this actually is, and just take a look at the text itself, it becomes immediately strange the wording that was used. What did the developers mean when they said, rescue the ghast, and return the ghast home when they wrote this achievement? Isn't the ghast home the nether? Why do we need to rescue them? Could it be that the ghast are actually mechanical homes that are housing the souls of none other than humans? We get another tip off this could be the case with a common drop from the gas themselves, the gas tears, which can be used for many high level crafting recipes. And even more crazy, many of the gas sound effects are called cries. So keeping this all in mind, it truly seems plausible that these fluffy pillow monsters we have been fighting in the nether for years now are actually mechanical cells trapping human souls who scream in pain and cry as they flow endlessly through the demented nether. So next time you kill a ghast, know it may actually be an innocent soul of a fellow human being. The golden apple is one of the rarest and most sought after items in the entirety of Minecraft. Rumored to only drop upon killing Notch's player character, these golden fruits restore a bunch of health and can be used in some of the rarest crafting recipes. But the story of how this apple was actually added to the game is where the real interesting lore begins. You see, back during the very beginning of Minecraft, in its infancy stages, the game had no dedicated multiplayer yet. Rather, players would host and join their own servers that all had a variety of issues, including non-stop griefing, no world backups, and hacking. All of this began to change though, thanks to one exceptionally skilled coder who went by the name JTE. She had spent countless hours reverse engineering the code base for Minecraft and its server side calls, which had been obfuscated by Notch to protect his intellectual property. And over time, JTE was able to create new servers and plugins that allowed Minecraft community members to more easily create and join multiplayer games. These servers included things like automatic backups, name color changes, and JTE even created her very own Spleef server, which was a popular Minecraft minigame to play with friends at the time. But for a first in Minecraft's history, this Spleef server would be automatically reset at the conclusion of each game instead of forcing players to manually rebuild every block to play again on the server. In many ways, JTE spawned the beginning of true Minecraft multiplayer, and she even created multiple advancements in the game's engine that Minecraft would later go on to use in its own standalone multiplayer. However, you may be wondering why almost no one in the community talks about JTE anymore. You would think for such an influential figure, more players would revere her. Sadly, the reason for this is that JTE and some of the Minecraft 4 moderators started to butt heads, with many claiming that she was stealing from the work of Notch and unfairly leading players to her servers instead of the new ones that Notch was working on. This resulted in many threats and bans, and even JTE herself making long posts about how she had done nothing wrong. Most of the community did back her, but also some felt she was wrong at the same time. This eventually pushed JTE to stop working on her updates, even though Notch himself was a fan. Where the golden apples come into play though, is after JTE did stop working on her server-side code, she still had not lost her love for the game, and created a website that would show players crafting recipes for the new crafting feature that was just being added into the game. Another idea that she came up with before Notch, adding crafting books into the game only later after this website was up. And as a joke on the website, JTE said to find apples, an item that was recently removed from the game, you had to kill Notch himself. And that to make a golden apple, all you had to do was surround that apple with eight gold ingots. These were two obvious jokes, but as a token of his appreciation, Notch did in fact, in a future patch, add both of these features to the game. 
and this resulted in the golden apples being some of the most rare and sought after items in the entire game, spawning entire series where big influencers in the Minecraft community would hunt for their very own golden apple. Back in Minecraft Alpha version 1.1.1, which was released in September of 2010, a new song track was unveiled that was created by the man himself, Notch. Titled Calm4.OGG, the track was mostly uneventful, except for one extremely strange moment partway through the song where a super slowed down version of presumably Notch saying Mojang specifications is simply thrown in for a couple seconds. In subsequent patches, this song was removed, and with the introduction of the Minecraft launcher in version 1.6.1, .1, the ability to play this old track was actually blocked since the music extraction method in-game had changed. The creepiest part about this whole ordeal though was that there never was any explanation. It simply left some players horrified after hearing this weird slowed down slang randomly while in caves in the game. However, in February of 2020, long after the track's initial release, Notch released this same Calm 4 track on his personal SoundCloud, but this time titling it Magnetic Circuit. For those that don't know, a magnetic circuit is a closed path that confines a magnetic field of flux within it, which is used in many devices like electronic motors and generators, similar to how electric circuits do the same thing for channeling electrons, only now by aligning molecular poles and with no flow. So could this title be a clue as to what's actually going on with the song Calm4.OGG? It's hard to say, as there's literally nothing online about this particular coincidence. So any speculation has to be made on the fly. But maybe this magnetic field analogy could be a clue that Notch feels like he's trapped in a prison within Minecraft. We know he had grown tired of the game over time, and we know magnetic circuits trap fields within them. So along with an ominously slowed down Mojang specification speech, maybe Notch was telling us he thought his work was too corporate at the time and he couldn't escape it. It's a huge revelation if true, but let's be real, it probably isn't. Let me know down below what you guys think the real meaning is. Or if you want to be boring, just mention it was a random song Notch created that people like me are blowing out of proportion. Cause while that's the real answer, it's no fun. Inside of the acclaimed endgame, or nether regions of Minecraft, I just realized how weird that sounds, lies a basalt delta's biome that may be hiding some unknown secrets to the world of Minecraft. You see, basalt is a dark, fine, and grainy rock produced from volcanic eruptions, but it is never explicitly stated in-game that the rocks here actually came from a volcano. Where this gets really weird is sometimes when traveling around the biome, the player may hear this strange sound. For those that didn't pick up on it, this sound is eerily similar to a Geiger counter, which measures the radioactivity by detecting and counting ionizing particles in the air. Could this be a clue from Mojang that the nether may actually be radioactive from the result of a volcanic eruption, or even more hauntingly, something else? Because some other theories in Minecraft actually postulate that the ancient debris mineral type, which we can find in-game, may be the result of a nuclear explosion that originally created the nether and spawned the now well-known in-game of Minecraft. Potentially this could mean that scientists at some point in the Minecraft universe went too far and set off a huge reactor meltdown and explosion experimenting with nuclear energy, and this could have created the nether as we know it today, resulting in new mineral types and the Geiger sounds that we hear. On top of this, the actual region of the nether points to radiation poisoning, as many of the trees have grown a lot of giant moss spores, which is interesting considering moss grows very well in highly radioactive environments. And lastly, the pigmen of the nether also have many weird genetic mutations and problems that could be attributed to high radiation, as well that it turns them into zombified pigmen. Either way, the story of the nether is shrouded in mystery, and a giant nuclear explosion seems to explain a lot of it. In 2012, with the rising popularity of Minecraft and exponentially growing player base, Mojang made the executive decision to start migrating player profiles over from their existing Minecraft accounts into the newly created Mojang accounts. 
Players were given the ability to simply migrate their account over to make sure they were included in new updates. But on May the 3rd, 2018, years later, a mistake was made. Over 100 Minecraft accounts that had not transitioned to Mojang accounts during the now six year window were accidentally deleted. This meant their profile names and accounts were up for grabs, and with some of these accounts boasting popular names like Imperial, this meant they were quickly grabbed up by other players and bots. In order to rectify their mistake, Mojang reverted the changes and allowed the old account owners and the new account owners to keep the same name, giving them both their own unique identifiers at a database level, as this was seen as the only fair option for both sets of people who had gotten the name. Some of these accounts to this day are the most rare and coveted in all of Minecraft. But where this gets even more perplexing though, is that one account specifically, named Dakwa, actually had 74 references in NameMC, a Minecraft name database, not just two. Some in the community speculated these were employee accounts used for testing, under the name Developer Account Quality Assurance. Under the name Developer Account Quality Assurance. But Minecraft YouTuber the Mr. Epic actually exposed the real truth in 2020. You see, during the early days of Minecraft, many organizations would try to quote unquote snipe usernames using an army of botnets to later sell to players who were dying to get the names that they really wanted. One of the developers involved in these groups actually discovered an exploit during testing some of their sniping code, which allowed users to spam Minecraft account creation pages with gift codes, which in turn created the possibility to instantiate infinite amounts of accounts under one profile. On top of this, using the gift card method, each account was given a completely unique universal identifier that could join servers, change names, and a lot more. This meant this one coder was able to duplicate the Dakwa account over 70 times, resulting in the now infamous question of what these accounts really are. Sadly, this exploit was patched in a future version of Minecraft and the duplicate accounts were removed forever, long gone to the history of the game. Nowadays, Minecraft being the phenomenon it is, attracts quite a large following to its yearly celebration, Minecon full of developer panels, gameplay demos, and fans just coming together to talk about the game they love. The first Minecraft though actually took place in August of 2010, with only 30 of the most diehard fans coming together to support a what was then smaller game in the park. This fact hasn't sat right with some people though, because there's a small portion of the player base online that swears they remember attending the first Minecon, not in 2010, but in 2008 only one year after the initial game's release, which at the time was called Cave Game. On some now deleted 4chan boards, there are multiple people speaking about this fabled event, and how apparently a large group of players all remember attending the first ever Minecon that never actually happened. This gets even creepier based on a video that was originally released around the same time, titled Minecon 2008, and this has only recently been re-uploaded where we can hear deranged men on camera grunting and stumbling through a house littered with trash. So what exactly is everyone remembering? And what is this weird video that surfaced online that seems to have been about Minecon before Minecon was even a real thing? A mystery we may never know. The Creeper is one of, if not the most iconic Minecraft creatures in the entire game, and for good reason. Many players who originally got into the game fondly remember the first time that a creeper ever charged them in the middle of the night and blew up their entire house. But most players don't actually know the backstory of how these monstrosities were originally developed. You see, back in 2009, the creator of Minecraft, Notch, was chatting with some fans online and sent an interesting message talking about how he had failed at trying to make a pig model for the game and wanted to show everyone how funny it was. He attached a hyperlink that took the fans to this image, which showed the now famous creeper silhouette, but completely grayed out. Notch noted on the same message board that he thought the figure was really creepy, and he would save it for an enemy in the game in the future. And well, we all know what enemy that eventually became. Even the mere mention of the name Herobrine will send shivers down the spines of many veteran Minecraft players. And the story itself dates back to when many people were actually first getting into the game. You see, the original known reference to this mysterious character comes all the way back in August of 2010, where a Minecraft forum post was made just after patch 1.0.16. In this post, a player mentions that he has been trying to make 
a post on the forums about a weird entity they saw in game, but that every time he made the post, it got taken down immediately. Following this strange incident, the user received a private DM from another unknown user named Herobrine, simply stating the words, stop. After doing a little digging, they were able to discover that the username actually belonged to a Swedish developer, and not just any developer, but the brother of Notch himself, creator of Minecraft. And things only got crazier from here. After emailing Notch to confirm if he did in fact have a brother in Sweden, Notch wrote back that he did, but that his Swedish brother had died months ago. Immediately after this original forum post, an image that the user grabbed was posted once again on the forums of this mysterious playthrough and entity in the game, and this set the forums ablaze with speculation. In the image, you could see in the distance a strange man in-game simply staring at the player, with a haunting mist surrounding him. Soon multiple streamers, most notably Copeland and Patamus, had found this weird monster Herobrine in-game with some clips going viral of the mysterious man appearing in-game only for their live streams to cut out and end on the same day. Now with the community in uproar, Copeland posted a secret link to a hidden website with nothing but the Minecraft character with weird eyeballs and code greeting visitors. When translated, the codes were shown to be references to a lost deity who was trying to escape its eternal prison, that apparently being Minecraft. It was speculated by some in the community at the time that Herobrine may have actually been the dark and ominous entity that had appeared in some old and unplayed Russian games from the 90s, now finding itself in the new plane of existence known as Minecraft, haunting multiple players. Sadly, for anyone gullible enough to actually believe any of this, it turned out to all be fake and it was proved that Copeland and many others in the community, including the forum posters, had all created an elaborate hoax that had tricked much of the Minecraft community, especially considering most of them were kids at the time, willing to lie and spread rumors on their behalf. On top of this, the internet was just not as mature at the time, and the game itself is not the one we know today. Many players were still discovering things as they would go on, and the game itself had a more eerie and creepy feel to it in general that lent to theories like this being believed by a lot of people, before RTX came in and made everything look so nice and shiny. In fact, funnily enough, Notch does not even have a younger brother, yet this creepypasta rumor was still able to spread like wildfire. To this day though, Herobrine is a staple of Minecraft lore and custom, being included in multiple events and cinematic trailers. And there's now a tradition in almost every patch note for Minecraft to include at one point the simple phrase, removed Herobrine from the game, as a funny nod and Easter egg for the players. Even the original seed to the world that that picture for Herobrine was taken from was found and to this day people are still out there searching for him. And while no one has been able to actually provide definitive proof this mysterious man exists, Herobrine shows just how interesting and fun the Minecraft community can really be. Based on the natural world border size of the Minecraft playable area, it would seem that the world of Minecraft itself is upwards of 8 times the size of our actual Earth. While this is impressive in its own right, where this theory gets even more interesting is the fact that the G-forces the Minecraft characters experience is most certainly not 8 Gs, which is what we would expect from an 8x mass increase. In fact, based on the average meter high jumps these characters are making on each block jump so effortlessly, the Minecraft world actually looks to have substantially less gravitational pull than on Earth. So what gives? Well, one explanation brought forth from the Minecraft community is that the Minecraft world is actually a hollow Earth. You see, on Earth, the distance from the center or core of our world to sea level is around 6,371 kilometers. But in Minecraft, that same distance calculation is a mere 62 meters. So could it be that all the extra space is nothing but a hollow center to this massive planet? thus limiting its gravitational pull in the universe to something much less than Earth. I don't know. It's just a video game. One of the coolest parts about Minecraft is the idea that each world is generated off of a seed reference number, which can then be used by subsequent players in the future to generate the same exact worlds based off of an internal game algorithm. There's actually a whole community based around finding programmatic and mathematical ways of constructing the most 
interesting worlds possible. And one of these worlds is the fabled seed you can see on screen. The seed spawns the player onto an island in the middle of the ocean. But besides this somewhat interesting start, the world seems as normal as any other. It's only by exploring the extensive cave system below ground that players can discover the truly terrifying part of the seed. As underground lies a never-ending and infinitely repeating sequence of the exact same matching cave system, which are generated due to matching sets of 32-bit integers being found one after another, which can be generated by finessing the pseudo-random properties of Java's random utility, which includes some internal steps like calling the next function to generate random bit sequences that can be programmatically set to match. This means that because of Java's sometimes wonky precision calculations, seeds can be found that produce infinite loops, generating the same objects over and over, through methods like setting a value to zero during a multiplication step in an algorithm that is generating a specific part of the map. Some players have accidentally stumbled upon these famous seeds, and early on in Minecraft told horror stories of finding themselves trapped in never-ending caves and tunnels that simply went on forever into the abyss. It's something that many players in the early days didn't actually think was possible, but it's a truly horrifying realization to find yourself in the middle of nowhere, repeating for eternity. The Warped Forest is one of the newer and more interesting biomes in all of Minecraft. It's a creepy and very frightening area with many mysterious and rare materials, but the most memorable aspect of the entire zone is for sure the music and the sounds. In some of the ambient tracks, most notably Warped Forest Mood 9, we can hear what sounds to be demented and slowed down laughter played backwards which we can hear from some of the Endermen in the zone, implying that they may be trying to communicate with us in some sort of way. We already know from some older Minecraft theories that Endermen do sometimes speak to the player in backwards or reversed English, set to different tones and frequencies, but here in the Warped Forest, it seems even more exaggerated. This could potentially also tie into the theory that the Ender Dragon is actually enslaving these Endermen, forcing them to do their bidding. And this warped forest zone could be one of the great powers that is allowing the Endermen to try and scream their last dying breaths, asking for help and salvation. Could it be that the Endermen of Minecraft are actually enslaved soldiers begging for help? And regardless, just what exactly is going on in this mysterious Minecraft zone? The secrets are still being discovered to this day. You would think after amassing a net worth just shy of $2 billion, the creator of Minecraft Notch would find himself in some of the happiest days of his life. But as is too common in stories like this, the sudden wealth that he accumulated from the game's success and eventual sale to Microsoft in 2014 only led to what many consider to be his downfall. You see, Notch was originally just an inspired programmer who liked making games in his free time, some of which we will discuss later on this list. And when he first created Minecraft over a decade ago, he had never imagined just how successful it would actually become. The problem was that Notch's true passion always laid in creating new and exciting prototypes for games, instead of the upkeep on existing ones. So when Minecraft found more and more success, he slowly distanced himself from the project, eventually letting a new leader take over, while he still maintained a majority of Mojang shares under his control. The issue though was, as new patches came out and more and more hate from the community arose from these patches, Notch was receiving the blame, even though he was barely even working on the game anymore. So in 2014, he tweeted out how he just wished he could just sell all his shares in Mojang and be done with it all, to which Microsoft actually immediately reached out to him and offered $2.5 billion in cash. With his newfound wealth, Notch bought out one of the most luxurious homes in Hollywood Hills and began to host weekly parties and extravagant events full of debauchery and crazy stories. And they were also frequented by many celebrities and famous YouTubers at the time. But with all this new free time and nothing to actually work for anymore, Notch slumped into a great depression, putting out many tweets in his darkest times about how life was meaningless now with so much money, and that no one could truly like him for him, but only the money and things he provided. And this eventually led to his divorce with his wife, after which he recently has seemed to have finally gotten better. It's a sad tale of just how dangerous money can really be if you get too much of it. 
and shows that even with all the money in the world, sometimes the true key to happiness is just working on what you truly love and creating things that light the imaginations of others, rather than partying yourself into week-long hangovers. One weird oddity in Minecraft is the fact that by placing pumpkins on the heads of snow and iron golems, they immediately come to life right in front of players' eyes. This has led many in the community to believe that pumpkins are actually imbued with souls in the Minecraft universe and have the ability to bring non-living creatures to life through the transferring of soul energy. On top of this, we now know that prior to patch 1.13, all naturally spawning pumpkins in game had faces already pre-carved into them without the player already interacting with them, which further suggests that Minecraft pumpkins may actually be holding onto something extra. A creepy revelation, for sure. The Minecraft Wither is a partially secret boss that players are able to summon by putting three Wither skeleton heads on top of a T-shape of sand blocks. After being summoned, the Wither flies into the air and starts to wreak havoc, shooting Wither skulls at nearby enemies, including the player, leaving death and destruction in its wake. It's an actually difficult boss, at least if you suck at Minecraft like me, and the strangest thing about it is we actually originally got reference to its summoning in a Minecraft painting in-game. These paintings and some lore show that the Withers are an extremely powerful and ancient lost race of monsters, and were even able to fight a stronger version called a Wither Storm as the main antagonist of Minecraft Story Mode Season 1. But this led many players to wonder if the original Withers that we can summon in-game are actually not the true form. It would explain why this Wither Storm is so much more powerful, and potentially lends credence to the idea that we have not actually discovered how to summon a perfect Wither yet. One that would be so powerful, we'd have no chance to kill it. Kind of like how they're actually explained in the lore. Our only summoning technique so far comes from a very pixelated painting. So potentially in the future, players may discover a way to create the real deal, but only time will tell. Ten to the Sea is a game that was originally pitched by Notch as a successor to Minecraft that almost none of the player base even knows about. It told the story of a team of astronauts who went into hibernation on a spaceship in the 80s, only to be woken up by the onboard computer system 281 trillion years later, hence the name of the game. With a similar art style to Minecraft, the game focused more on first-person shooting and combat in small spaces, but Notch did plan to allow players to travel to multiple different planets, with similar mechanics to Minecraft, including crafting, trading, and creating. The game was cancelled in 2013 though, shortly before the sale of Minecraft to Microsoft, and Notch simply said he was having trouble being creative within the game, so it was eventually cancelled. For me though, this game on paper could have been awesome, and the idea of a Minecraft in space across multiple planets with fast-paced and fun quake-like first-person shooting sounds great. Sadly, this game will likely never see the light of day, but in many ways could have been No Man's Sky before No Man's Sky was even a thing. Say what you will about Notch, but that man is truly a visionary. Entity 303 is a creepypasta story first mentioned by the user TheSpeed179 that tells the tale of a group of friends who got more than they bargained for while playing Minecraft. One of the more tech-savvy friends in the group sets up a server for his friends and himself, and they all hop in and start building a variety of things together. But this is where it starts to take a dark turn. According to the story, the friends noticed that on the server a strange message had appeared from a new user simply named 303. The stop command had been typed in by this mysterious player, but nothing else happened. Some of the friends in the group began to freak out and became concerned, but after double and triple checking, they were able to confirm that there was in fact no one else on the server, and that it had probably just been a glitch. Suddenly though, more commands started pouring onto the screen with the 301 character spawning multiple objects to which the friend group was not aware of what they were. One of them was even able to, out of the corner of their eyes, notice a strange and mysterious figure off in the distance simply staring at them on the server. And on their Skype call, they all started to theorize about what was actually happening. But it was at this moment that a strange new man joined the Skype call with a blacked out face and distorted speech. Most of the friend group immediately screamed and left, all but one, simply being told the phrase, make a wish. The boys' computers started to exhibit signs of being hacked, and they all agreed to stop playing as the whole ordeal with this mysterious hacker had really freaked them out. Sadly though, this was not the end of the road for this friend group. 
as soon they started being watched in real life as well, with multiple in the group receiving notes or finding writing in their mirrors that simply said, make a wish. Shortly after, all of the boys went missing. Some in the Minecraft community to this day believe that Entity 303 is still somewhere out there, searching for its next victim, hiding in the shadows. And coincidentally, all of those people are under the age of 10. The Golden Apple is one of the rarest and most sought after items in the entirety of Minecraft. Rumored to only drop upon killing Notch's player character, these golden fruits restore a bunch of health and can be used in some of the rarest crafting recipes. But the story of how this apple was actually added to the game is where the real interesting lore begins. You see, back during the very beginning of Minecraft, in its infancy stages, the game had no dedicated multiplayer yet. Rather, players would host and join their own servers that all had a variety of issues, including non-stop griefing, no world backups, and hacking. All of this began to change though, thanks to one exceptionally skilled coder who went by the name JTE. She had spent countless hours reverse engineering the code base for Minecraft and its server side calls, which had been obfuscated by Notch to protect his intellectual property. And over time, JTE was able to create new servers and plugins that allowed Minecraft community members to more easily create and join multiplayer games. These servers included things like automatic backups, name color changes, and JTE even created her very own Spleef server, which was a popular Minecraft minigame to play with friends at the time. But for a first in Minecraft's history, this Spleef server would be automatically reset at the conclusion of each game instead of forcing players to manually rebuild every block to play again on the server. In many ways, JTE spawned the beginning of true Minecraft multiplayer, and she even created multiple advancements in the game's engine that Minecraft would later go on to use in its own standalone multiplayer. However, you may be wondering why almost no one in the community talks about JTE anymore. You would think for such an influential figure, more players would revere her. Sadly, the reason for this is that JTE and some of the Minecraft 4 moderators started to butt heads, with many claiming that she was stealing from the work of Notch and unfairly leading players to her servers instead of the new ones that Notch was working on. This resulted in many threats and bans, and even JTE herself making long posts about how she had done nothing wrong. Most of the community did back her, but also some felt she was wrong at the same time. This eventually pushed JTE to stop working on her updates, even though Notch himself was a fan. Where the golden apples come into play though, is after JTE did stop working on her server side code, she still had not lost her love for the game, and created a website that would show players crafting recipes for the new crafting feature that was just being added into the game. Another idea that she came up with before Notch, adding crafting books into the game only later after this website was up. And as a joke on the website, JTE said to find apples, an item that was recently removed from the game, you had to kill Notch himself. And that to make a golden apple, all you had to do was surround that apple with eight gold ingots. These were two obvious jokes, but as a token of his appreciation, Notch did in fact, in a future patch, add both of these features to the game. And this resulted in the golden apples being some of the most rare and sought after items in the entire game spawning entire series where big influencers in the Minecraft community would hunt for their very own golden apple. In 2018, Microsoft hosted the Marlowe event, otherwise known as multi-agent reinforcement learning in Minecraft. The goal was for participants to create rudimentary artificial intelligence that could do small tasks in Minecraft like crafting items, killing sheep, etc, etc. And while the event itself was somewhat of a success, nothing truly big came out of it besides one coder who created an army of AI to chase chickens. Some in the Minecraft community believe that something much crazier occurred at this event though. You see, what originally was talked about a lot by Microsoft turned out to be a pretty low key thing, and it wasn't talked about much at all after the fact. Almost like they were hiding something. Could it be that one of the contestants in this Marlowe event had actually stumbled upon a way to create general relative intelligence through Minecraft? And is this fact being hidden away from people in fears that it could lead to a lot of outcry? A select few Minecraft players believe this might just be the case. While today Minecraft is a worldwide phenomenon for all ages, it actually had very humble beginnings. Notch was doing a programming contest where he quickly coded up what he called at the time Cave Game, which was the early predecessor for what would eventually become Minecraft. The weird thing though is, 
it can sometimes be hard to actually find videos of the game during this time, as the pre-classic Minecraft videos are all censored on Notch's channel. There's no clear explanation as to why this is the case, and there's been no official definitive word on what's happening here. Some have begun to speculate that these videos may actually be hiding a dark secret from the game's past that Microsoft and Mojang don't want to get out, hence why so many cave game videos have been censored. Could it be that the game that originally spawned Minecraft has a heinous secret no one knows about? There's some rumors that even Mafia and gang ties were found to this original cave game at its Ludum Dare competition. Either way, it's weird to think that Minecraft started from just this.